Hello, well, that's tuning into a sixth autumn 2025 update from Gazworthy. So here we go again. We're, we're going to bring you more autumn data. We're up to update number six in our autumn updates. I'll get on with it for you in a moment. Just say that first video sales are 6 a.m. UK. Well, for guys, got a Sunday round coming up. I'm going to try and squeeze in a 10 for a day. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to. I've got a hospital appointment I've got to go to. It's uh, regarding, you know, the cancer that I had a few years. Go just check it, nothing serious, but like it's a follow up appointment, and I can't miss those, so I've got to go to that. Got work this afternoon, so whether I'll be able to squeeze in a 10 to 40 there, I don't know. If I can't, then we'll just have to leave that uh, this uh, this Sunday and do one tomorrow. Uh, but anyway, please like, share, and subscribe on all of today's videos and content. Thank you so much, everyone, uh, for doing that. Thank you so much to uh, Richard to Shrine and to Terry Hashtag Team Gal for uh, you know being absolutely amazing with this and all of our updates. Dates as well. Thank you so much uh, to Team Gab. Unbelievable. Thank you so Richard for the gift, of course. This is actually a Shrine special. Shrine's got this one uh, together. I wasn't sure what we're going to be doing this week, but uh, turns out that the PDO, the Pacific Decadal Oscillation, is in a very negative phase. <laughs> <coughs> So sorry, everyone, in a very negative uh, phase at the moment. So this is showing the PDO by monthly periods back to 2024. And uh, you can see that uh, we're plunging down here uh, during June and July for the uh, PDO. It was very negative through uh, much of the summer, autumn uh, last year, but then went back up to neutral over the winter and spring period. We've gone negative again. It looks like this will be a top per 10 uh, most negative PDO, possibly a top 12 most negative uh, June and July combination for the PDO. And so that's what we're going to be looking at this week in countdown. So starting off at number 12, uh, this is uh, the year of 2008. So for June and July, 2008 was the 12th most negative for the Pacific Decade Oscillation. Autumn 2008 has a ridge. <coughs> <coughs> So, sorry again, everyone has a ridge out, out to the west and low pressure to our north and also to our east. Slightly colder water, uh, that one, with a few cold snaps coming and going. At number 11, we've got 2021. This has a hot September, very hot September, with an anticyclonic influence from the Atlantic into much of uh, western Europe. There's sort of a drier and warmer spring. At number 10, We've got 1991 with low pressure to the north and northeast, high pressure out in the Atlantic, wind tends to be coming in from a westerly direction. It has a very dry and warm September and then gradually turns uh, a little bit more unsettled as the autumn goes along. It has a cold snap in October as well, I think, at number nine. <coughs> And we've got 2022 breaking down the hot summer with high pressure going north, low pressure in the Atlantic and bringing the wind from the west and from southwest. Tremendous thunderstorms at the beginning of September. And then the rest of the autumn is generally mild, but also very wet. Number 12, talking of wet autumns at number 12, we've got 2012. At number 8, I should say, we've got 2012. A big low pressure through the north and the west of uh, Europe. So that's a very uh, wet summer of course that we have in 2012 and it's followed by uh, a very wet autumn uh, as well has a wet september quite cool in september too uh, and also has quite a cold ish and uh, wet november as well i seem to uh, remember 2012 isn't as wet in october though i don't think at number seven we've got 1971 with high pressure just to our west low pressure into the north and the jet stream and wind flows coming in something like that. That's a drier and warmer autumn in 1974. And then at number six, in terms of being uh, top 12 most negative uh, PDOs for June and July, uh, we have 1952. So this one. With low pressure to the east, high pressure out in the Atlantic, winds coming in from the north, from the northeast. That's quite a cold and unsettled autumn. Number five, we've got 1999. High pressure is over Scandinavia, winds coming in uh, from the east. So that's, uh, um, well, has a very hot first half after September. 
Main turns wet, but it's very warm. Second half in September. October drier and November drier as well, but generally a very warm autumn in 1999. Okay, well, at number four, we've got 1955. So the autumn of 1955, with high pressure tend to be out to the west and going into the Atlantic. So that one is uh, a drier autumn and also a pretty mild or <coughs> warm a lot of time as well. Number three is 2023 with low pressure in from the Atlantic. Again, tremendous heat wave in September that we have in 2023. It is the hottest September for the century in temperature going all the way back to 1659. Otherwise, quite an unsettled autumn with plenty of rain. At number two, we've got 2024. This is one of those bizarre anomalies for 500 millibar heights that we tend to get a lot of lately. Doesn't really tell you much about yours. You wouldn't look at that and know that it had a very wet September, for example. And uh, then it does turn a little bit dry, but it's quite an unsettled autumn in 2024. The analogue tells you absolutely nothing about that season. I mean, at number one, the uh, most negative for the PDO for now, uh, for June and July, is 1950. The autumn of 1915. <coughs> I'm sorry, again, everyone. It's a very unsettled, wet uh, autumn. So, a uh, bit of a down is going on in the autumn of 1950. Our most negative of a PDO in June and July. Right, put all that together. Let me start all September combined. Uh, looking over oh, quite an unsettled signal for September. So, maybe a bit of a surprise given some of the years that we've got in the mix there. Uh, but quite an unsettled September. Then we're into classic zonal flow in the October. So October combined with low pressure north, high pressure to the south. And we bring the wind in from the west. All at November's combined. Low pressure to our north and east. High pressure out in the Atlantic. A little bit colder potential uh, maybe in the November. There's going to be a few cold snaps coming through. And finally, all autumns combined following uh, the most states to PDO in June July looks like that with low pressure to the east high pressure out to the west winds in from a northwesterly direction rather surprising anomaly that one mostly secure I would have thought by what's happening in the November so it's like an unsettled signal for those autumns and getting colder later perhaps Okay, and that is your 6th autumn 2025 update. I've just got to tell you that the autumn forecast because um, I thought the autumn forecast was going to be released on the 27th of the uh, of, um, <coughs> On the 27th of uh, August, which is a Wednesday, because we changed autumn uh, long-range updates back from Wednesday to Sunday, as nobody was watching them on a Wednesday. Um, so uh, the autumn forecast is going to be released, I think, on Sunday the 31st of August, the last day of the month. Hope that's all right with everyone. I'll confirm that in a week or two. Right, OK, well, that's it for your sixth autumn update. Thank you so much to Shryan, uh, for sorting motions out. Thank you so much to Richard for amazing autumn updates gift. Thanks so much for tearing. As always, hashtag Team Gav does an amazing job for us. Don't forget to check out Gav's moment Sunday Roundup. And as I say, I'm not sure if I'll be able to squeeze in a 10 to 14 day or not. It just depends what time I get back from hospital versus what time I'm going to go do my day job. Right, okay, or my second job. Right, okay, we'll end it there. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday for this one. That's all for now. And thanks for watching.